What's up YouTube, Jim from Backyarders TV here. Today I want to run through a beginner's guide to Warframe. This is not an in-depth guide, it is just to get new players up and running with some of the basics. As you've no doubt already found out, Warframe can be a bit overwhelming to new players. The tutorials aren't great, so a lot of new players get stuck and often leave the game soon after starting. This video is going to cover a few areas with just enough info to get you going. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the areas I'm talking about. This is just to give you enough info to start enjoying the game. Let's get into it. So first thing we're going to do is go to our options and then click on controls and scroll down until you find, um, uh, where is it? Context, action, includes, reload. Now you want to turn this off. It's on by default. What this does is um, it will reload your weapon when you try and interact with the world. If you try and open a box or you try and, um, you know, hack a console, if your weapon needs to reload, it will reload it right there. And it's very annoying and it's, um, uh, it's just better off. So we will only now reload your weapon when you press R or if you uh, are out of ammo. So that's the first one. All right, the next thing we're going to do is go over to our display settings and scroll down till you find color correction and you want to turn off color correction. Now, for some reason, this is on by default and it makes the game look all washed out um, and gives it a sort of blurry effect uh, and it doesn't look very good. As soon as you turn it off, the whole game will crisp up um, and it will look pretty awesome. So go ahead and turn off color correction. You can, of course, try it with it on, but give it a go with it off and see which one you prefer. What I talk about is the weapon mods. Um, so in that initial quest, you would have picked up a handful of uh, mods. Mods are these cards down below. And um, pretty much they, as you would assume, modify your weapon or your Warframe. So first of all, you will see that these ones are cracked. Now, initially in the game, you will get cracked ones or damaged ones. Um, that stops well, happening after a certain level. Operator. Uh, so for now, use what you've got, but later on, obviously the damaged ones, the ones with the cracks in them, you're going to get rid of very soon. So don't stress too much about them. Uh, as you level up, you'll get uh, proper mods that aren't damaged, like this one here, and um, and it's of you know it's the same same mod, just undamaged. And if it's undamaged, you get more um, stats on it. Um, right. So let's have a quick look. Each mod will have a cost. In the top right hand corner, there is a cost. This one costs two, this one costs four, and so on and so on. So they all have a cost. Um, now, you have a capacity, which is what that cost is, right? So um, if I use this one in this slot here, that uses up all four, because it costs four. Now, what you will notice is next to the number four, there is a little symbol. And that symbol matches with this symbol. That's called the polarity. Now, if you match polarity, it halves the cost of the card. So, if I was to put this card, which costs four, into this slot, it only costs two, because it halves the cost. Okay, and if I put it into a slot that um, doesn't match, it will, I think it doubles. So if I was to put this one, hold on, let me get rid of that. If I put this one, which costs two, into that slot, it costs three, so it costs one and a half times. Um, so you want to avoid mismatching them and you want to, where possible, get your highest card um, well, that you want to put in into the matching slot. So you can come down the bottom here and hit actions and you can auto install. Okay, and that's going to jam a few in there and you see it didn't really make the best use of um, our polarity uh, and it just sort of jams whatever it wants. So let's get rid of that one because that's no, not really good. Um, and we're going to put in uh, Ability Strength. We'll put that in because we can use the Polarity and it will cost two. And there we go. We've used both in the Polarities and um, good to go. What you can do is you can mod uh, and then go to Fusion. And you will pick, say we wanted to, you know, up. what we're doing here is upgrading our mods. We like this redirection. It's pretty solid. We're going to click it, and we're going to go Fusion, and then we're going to increase our rank. Now, our rank costs two currencies. It costs credits and endo. 
Uh, we start off, we've got about 180 endo, and you'll get endo through doing missions and stuff like that, and credits you get by doing missions as well. Um, I'm going to rank this up two spots. It's going to cost tw um, two more capacity points. It now costs six. And what you will find is I cannot use it because I'm over over my limit. And this is what it tells me here. Fusion conflict installed mod would exceed capacity of Excalibur. So I'm going to uninstall it and I'm going to upgrade it all the same. Okay, so now if I go back, you'll see I, if I get rid of that one, uh, my redirection costs six, but if I put it in that slot, it only costs three, and I'm good to go. But now it's upgraded. Um, now it's gone, uh, I think it was 60% shield capacity, now to 120 shield capacity. And you'll see down the bottom all these blue little dots, that's how many times I can upgrade it. Obviously the higher you get, the more expensive it gets, and of course the more capacity it's going to take to use. Now you've got different mods depending on the weapon. Um, my Warframe itself has mods that uh, you use. And the weapons, you can do the same thing on the weapons. Um, so I've already put on Serration, it costs two. Now this one doesn't have any polarity at this point. So everything costs base value. So I'll put that in there and doesn't really matter. These are both pretty ordinary. And I'll just put that in there and that's fine. I'm not gonna bother upgrading any of these. They're all damaged. There's no point upgrading damaged weapons, uh, mods. And again, we'll go through to my secondary. Uh, let's see, Hornet Strike. See here, so now I have a slot that has a polarity, but I don't have a mod that matches that polarity. So I'm not going to put a card in that, not that it, I could anyway, but um, you know, if you wanted, if you had enough capacity to put one of these in, these cost four, I've only got one left, you would obviously put it here or there, not into that slot. Pretty straightforward stuff. To start off, uh, I think the, the best way to approach the mods and which ones to use, look for base damage increases on your weapons. So this one is a plus 10% damage increase. That's a good one to start with. Um, then you can go into adding electricity to your weapons uh, and they're all heat, and that's fine. Um, but ideally you start off with plus base damage. Um, once you start messing with this, it's a little bit more advanced. You get different uh, statuses by adding electricity and fight. We don't really want to cover that. But yeah, you're pretty safe looking for base damage increases. If you have a high crit weapon, and you'll see this one isn't very high, it's only a 5% crit chance, but say that was at 15, 20% already, then if I had a crit modifier, I would go for crit because it's a crit type weapon already. So they're just sort of guidelines. Um, but the idea here is you have entire freedom to build it any way you want. Um, and that's what makes this game unique is that you can build it any which way and you can make a weapon high crit, high damage, uh, you can make it electric damage, fire damage, um, whatever the situation really uh, calls for, you can modify in that way. So let's just upgrade our melee weapon. Again, all of these are different. We're just going to go, I would normally put, oh, I just said about the straight melee damage, but here let's go for attack speed, because why not? It all depends. You know, this one's more attack, that one's more damage. So we're going to go more speed. Right. So that's how you modify a weapon. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, mastery rank. Mastery rank is your overall rank. So you'll see people talking about I'm MR10, I'm MR15. Uh, I think the max at the moment is MR25, Mastery Rank 25. You'll see here, this blue bar is my Mastery Rank. If you hit Escape, you will see the blue bar. Uh, I'm on Mastery Rank 0 because I just started this new profile. And I am almost at Mastery Rank 1. So, the question is, how do I gain Mastery Rank? The main way to gain Mastery Rank is to upgrade your items. And when I say items, I'm including Warframes, Weapons... You know, melee weapons, primary, secondary weapons, and that blue bar underneath is the rank of that weapon, and it says it there, right? So my my Excalibur is rank four. The max rank of any item is max rank thirty. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit confusing for new players. When I hit level thirty, it will say that item is max rank, and once I hit level thirty, I then achieve some mastery points which go to my mastery rank for having done that item to level 30, right? 
So the first time I get an uh, Excalibur, for example, as soon as I get him up to level 30, I will gain X ma a number of um, mastery rank points. I can't remember the actual numbers at the moment, but uh, it doesn't matter. The goal here is to constantly be leveling an item to level 30. In other games, you will, you know, you've got a class, you pick your class, and then you build your weapon, you go, I love that weapon, and away I go. This game, you do that, but to progress, you want to constantly be upgrading something new, be it a new Warframe, uh, a new weapon, new melee weapon, new primary weapon, etc. So once I get a weapon up to Master Rank 30, how do I go about getting a new one so I can rank up the next one to Master Rank 30? What you do is you come over to your foundry. Now, the foundry is where you build things. This game doesn't reward you with actual weapons for the most part. Sometimes it does, but for the most part, um, it gives you crafting materials. And then you will need to buy or, uh, or find blueprints to make the weapon that you're after. So, the foundry is here. This is where we would build things, okay? Now, you can, this is the marketplace. Now this game is free to play. I want to be very clear here. Um, the marketplace does not require you to spend real money to play the game. Okay. Um, there are weapons and and warframes here that you pick up that you unlock with credits. You can unlock with platinum, which is the real money conversion currency. Um, but you do not need to. So don't think, oh no, a free-to-play game, I'm going to have to, you know, tip into my pocket every two seconds. That's not the case at all with this game. It's what I really enjoy about this game. It doesn't force anything on you. So, we're going to go to weapons. We're going to click up here, weapons, and we're looking for a new primary weapon. And these are all going to be mastery locked. Oh no, here we go. Alright. A quick, good, easy way to do it is type MK. And MK weapons are going to be pretty much the starting weapons that you had the choice from. Okay. Um, I already ha I chose that one. There is a bow and there's a shotgun. Let's unlock the bow. All right. It costs fifteen thousand credits. We have currently thirty-eight thousand credits, um, which is great. And we've got five open slots, so we can just slot it in. And now I'm going to buy it with my credits. This weapon, however. Is a straight-up weapon so I've just bought the weapon there are other items which you buy and you buy the blueprint so that's here we go so this is a blueprint for another bow let's pick something else um, uh, let's have a look let's have a look all right the Volcar 20,000 for the blueprint okay so we're not buying the weapon, we're buying the blueprint for the weapon. So we've got 23,000, so I'm just going to buy this. Uh, and right now you'll see that we can't actually make it yet. I've got the credits, I don't have the Morphix, I don't have the circuits, and I don't have the plastids. But I'm going to buy it anyway just to show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so now we've bought the blueprint. So, if we go down to our foundry, You will see that there it is. It's in there, uh, ready to be made, but I don't have the components. So this is where I go off and I do missions and, and quests and things to get components. Now, just briefly, if we go back to our, found, our arsenal here, you will see we bought the Paris, which was the bow. So if I equip that, let's assume this was already max rank 30. I'm done with that weapon. It's not a great weapon. I don't really love it. I don't want to keep it. That's fine. I'm going to switch out to the Paris, which is a bow, um, and that's unranked, and then I would level that up to level 30. One thing to, to note, all the mods that I applied to, um, to the other weapon, I can apply again to this weapon. They're not used once and that's it. So any mod that you've got, you can apply to multiple weapons. So this weapon doesn't have any capacity to start with, it's unranked. As I rank up, that will unlock. Um, as a general, generally, well not generally, but the way it works is the mastery rank that you are at any given time will be the base capacity that you have for any weapon. So I'm mastery rank zero with this account. So when I unlock a new weapon, there's zero capacity. Um, all right. So that's how you upgrade and get mastery rank from weapons in Warframes. 
The other way to get mastery rank is to do certain missions. Now you'll see on the map, you start on f off with Earth and you do the pretty much tutorial missions. You see this mission here is lit blue. The rest are unchecked. Pretty much any place that is unchecked you haven't done and you should do. And that all the dotted line will fill in and then you can travel anywhere along those dotted lines. If I want to go to Venus, uh, it's dotted there, I need to do the Venus Junction. Okay. Any junction is the way to get from planet to planet and it will tell you um, what you need to do on the left hand side to meet the criteria to do the junction. Um, I need to do uh, apply four mods to a single Warframe weapon, I haven't done that, I don't have enough capacity yet. And the other part, defeat three Eximus enemies on Earth, which I haven't done that either because we just started. Um, but the key here is these blue missions. As I finish these missions I get mastery points as well all right so let's do um, let's quickly do a mission and I want to talk about movement and um, how to how to play in a fluid way so let's quickly load in okay so let's have a look Alright, so most first person shooters or third person shooters, they're all about run and gun, yeah? You run around, you, you know, find something, you shoot something, you hold shift and you sprint. This game doesn't really work that way. Uh, you can do it that way, but you're not really making the most out of it. The This game is all about the parkour and the fluid movement. And you'll see if you've ever played with a, a random public group, they will be streaking ahead of you and you'll be running around like this and going, why can't I keep up? Alright, so. There's a couple combinations that will make you, um, you know, really get you moving. And once you master them, you'll be able to keep up and you'll be leading the pack. Um, they don't really talk about these in the opening missions. Uh, but the first one is the bullet jump, which is control space. Let me do that again because I screwed it up. So as you're running, control space does a bullet jump, just like that. Control space, bullet jump. Alright. That one's pretty... That's your staple. Pretty much, control space gets you around. Now, on the back of a control space, you can string together a double shift, which will give you a roll. So, control space, bullet jump, double shift, roll. And between each of these, you can change direction. You see how I'm getting around these relatively tight corners? Just by doing control space, shift, shift that way, you see? So, practice that, control space, shift, shift, that's your staple. If you can get that down, you're going a long way to, um, to getting your moves. When you're running, there's another one, which is just pick control, and it's a slide. So as you come out of a bullet jump, so control space, and then hold control, and I'll be sliding. And off a slide, you can actually shoot, um, and you know, go shooting people and stuff. Um... Another great one to add to that combination, and these sort of all dependent on the situation. Uh, you know, you can do a bullet jump, roll, and then you might just want to hover and hold right mouse button, and you will zoom in, and you will hover and pretty much go slow-mo, and it looks awesome, and you can actually shoot through this. So it's a great way just to pop people in the head while, while floating. Um, so, you've got your bullet jump, you got your roll, you got space, which is a sort of a double space, um, is sort of a jump flip. And add that as well. So all of these string together nicely, and then you can, on the back of it, you can float in and shoot someone in the head. Uh, another one with your melee weapon is, while you're running, you control, and then you press E. And it does a swirl attack, tornado attack. Oops, we've got a wave incoming. Here's trouble. Okay, let's see how this works. So, it's control and then E. Slice and dice. When you're in the air, if you press E, which is your melee attack, um, you will do a dive with the blade. Depends on the melee weapon, whatever you've got. Um, and you will uh, attack in that way, or our favourite, the old slide slice. 
that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with the movement. Um, the more you practice, the better you'll get. And uh, start immediately. One other thing I want to talk about for, um, for abilities is your Warframe. Most people forget that their Warframe is unique. Each Warframe is unique and has unique abilities. And as you um, unlock... As you unlock the uh, Mastery Rank, or sorry, as you rank up the Warframe itself... Here's another player's just joined. Um, as you... Uh, as you rank up the Warframe, certain abilities will unlock. You have four abilities per frame. And the abilities use energy. You'll see in the bottom right corner of my screen there, <clears throat> there's that blue bar and it's got a five next to it. That means I've got five energy. So I'm out of energy at the moment. And those blue orbs that you will see coming off enemies, their energy uh, replenished or ammo for energy. And when you get them, you can then apply your abilities. So good way to check your abilities. Hit escape, go to abilities, <clears throat> and you will see. Uh, the Warframe I have at the moment, Excalibur, has un uh, unlocked Slash Dash, which is number one, and that, you press number one and he does a Slash Dash. But don't forget about one, two, three, four of uh, your abilities on your actual Warframe. Like I said, each one is unique, so as you unlock different Warframes, you want to check each one um, and make sure you got the right, you're actually using them because it is super powerful. Some Warframes will have defensive um, abilities, some will have offensive, um, some will have uh, crowd control, some will have healing, there's there's the energy orb, see that? Now we've got 30, so now if I press my number one ability, not this guy because he's already dead, this guy here, there we go, we just use a, a blade slice, cost 25 a bit, um, energy there, so... So these energy orbs, they do drop quite a lot. Um, so make do use them. Don't don't think oh I'm wasting my my ability. Get amongst it. Use the abilities. That's what they're there for. Um, and that's where half the fun is. Another thing that the tutorial or the main intro uh, missions don't really talk about is your melee weapon. So pressing E will uh, use pretty much quick attacks, which are great while you still have your main weapon out. But if you want to focus your melee weapon, you want to press and hold F. And that will bring out your main weapon as a primary, and it doesn't auto switch back. Now, while you've got this out, if I if you hold the left mouse button, you'll see that the weapon is now glowing. That means it's channeling. Okay? An ability called channeling. Um, and by holding left, while you're channeling, you are doing more damage. But you are using energy, the energy we spoke of, to do these attacks. But you do a lot more damage with the with the melee weapon while you, you are channeling. Um, so as long as you have energy uh, with you, or on you, and you'll see it doesn't use a lot, so it's actually quite a good thing to do. Um, and this will come in handy later on when you get a stance mod, where you can do combos. Um, it is kind of cool. So holding left mouse, the weapon glows, you start slicing and dicing. Another thing you do is hold right mouse button. Uh, and that is defensive, and if somebody shoots you, you actually block the uh, attack, the bullets, with your blade. Because you're a ninja. Why not? Let's do that. Here we go. There we go. Here's me blocking. Block, 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 and then slice, slice, slice. Just like that. Alright, so they're the basics of movement, basics of its combat, um, and that's pretty much it. Now just play around with the different combinations of movement. Alright, so uh, another thing I want to talk about really quickly is the way you earn rank on each of your um, your loadout here. So your Warframe and your, your, um, your weapons. So if you have unlocked... Uh, or maxed out rather a let's say you've maxed out your primary weapon and You're doing a mission which you know you can survive with your secondary and your melee. You're pretty good uh, You know what you're doing and you don't really need your primary for now if you go and equip and equip none for your primary the XP that you earn in the mission will be divided across 
the remaining two items, or this, including your Warframe, right? So this works really well. Let's work it the other way. So if we were to say, okay, we've got our rifle, and this is max rank 30. We don't need our, let's pretend it was 30, and so we're going to ignore it. And we're just going to run with our rifle. And you know what? We don't even need our melee weapon because we're pretty confident we're good with just the rifle. All of the XP I earn is going to be divided between my Warframe and my rifle. Which means this will rank up a lot quicker. So once you've max ranked a couple of items, think about dropping them off. Um, and putting them on as needed. Because if you drop it off, you will uh, rank the remaining items a lot quicker. So that's just something to think about. You don't have to do it, but it's a good way to uh, power level certain items. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, just drop off the ones you don't need and then put them on as, you know, if you need a mission that you know you're going to use your melee weapon for, um, don't be shy, put your melee weapon on. Okay, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you got something out of it. It uh, did ramble on a bit, so I do apologize, but um, I was trying to cover a fair bit in a short amount of time and I ended up taking a hell of a lot of time. Anyway, I'm gonna stop yapping. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. I will be uh, happy to answer. You can also catch me on Twitch. I will put my link in the description below and I uh, will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.